Good morning, Ebenezer family and friends. It is so good to be back with you. I tell you, it's been a whirlwind the last seven days, but aren't you glad that we can connect on this virtual connection and we can give God some praise. So if you could just take some time, um, put just kick those uh, flip flops off or those bedroom shoes, whatever you have, and just lift up those hands and say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Uh, if you're on our chat and you put me some emotional times there, some smiley faces, uh, just being blessed to be alive and know who Jesus is. I want to thank you as always just for staying connected, uh, encouraging others. Uh, this virtual connection is really impacting uh, not just our Ebenezer uh, community, but uh, we are having loved ones from abroad, um, out of state that are really getting on uh, the bus with us as we just uh, love on Christ and allow him to speak into our hearts. We truly are living epistles. just want to read that scripture to you today to let you know that we are that example it says you are an epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. I've had to go to many funerals in the last few days. And I tell you, uh, we preach our own eulogy, uh, the things that we do in our lives, the people that we touch and encourage. I'm telling you, when it all is said and done, that's what uh, Christ uh, uses to transform those that are around us. And I just thank God for being saved and for you and me being an example to others as we walk on this life's journey. Uh, don't forget about our Bible reading uh, program uh, that we've got going on where we're going through the Bible chronologically. Uh, if you uh, look at that little scan me code, you can get on the Bible bus, but I want you to know we're almost finished. We're getting ready uh, to go into uh, the season of the winter. You're like, winter? That's it's hot outside. Mark my words, it will be here before you know it. But please, please don't hesitate uh, and, and start later. Jump on now. And wherever that starts at, our chronological Bible, jump in. And guess what? When we start back the new year, we're going to start back over again. But reading the word is so, so powerful. And God uses it in an amazing way. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Uh, don't forget about um, just staying connected. We put so much on our website. You know, someone knows needs to know about salvation. You can go there. I've done a special teaching on salvation, uh, of what it means to be saved. You know, going to church uh, doesn't save us. That is about the fellowship. Uh, being online doesn't save us. That's about the fellowship, staying connected and growing. But please, please, uh, we've got a lot of information on our website. And we want to, I want you to stay interactive with us. We have our uh, app our special app, and it is being updated over and over again. Uh, the company that we're using is doing an excellent job of keep, keeping that platform strong and notifications. So I encourage you, if you have not downloaded that app, uh, go to ebcnc.com, go up into the corner, and you'll see their downloads for Androids as well as iPhones. Don't forget about all of our virtual services. On Mondays, uh, we have Monday Man at 7 o'clock, different teachings and trainings that are there. On Tuesday, we have our Noonday Bible Study. Uh, where we're going through the book of Genesis and learning about history uh, with, uh, within the scriptures. And then on Wednesday, we're actually going through the book of Hebrews at seven o'clock. And that's been an amazing study. Um, those who can come on out to our in-person Bible study on Thursdays, six to seven, six to seven. And um, I I'm telling you, just to be able to interact with one another, again, using that word, having community, it means so much. We're going through the book of First Corinthians. Corinthians. And we're just learning about who Christ is. Even as we get into communion today, um, I use a portion of that uh, particular scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, just talking about the revelation that Paul the Apostle received about Christ and uh, his sacrifice for us. So if you can come out, come on out Thursday, 6 to 7, right there in the sanctuary. Don't forget to pray about uh, all of our services, our 845 in-person service, our 1045 in-person service, and yes, our 10 o'clock online. I have been just amazed at how God has enabled us uh, to be able to do all these things, but I have been so blessed uh, to see the fruits 
uh, that God is producing. Uh, don't forget about uh, just your giving. And I celebrate you in everything that you do. Uh, God really lets us know in the scriptures, he wants us to give with a cheerful heart. And I don't ever want to forget to just thank you for what you do, that you're giving uh, with a cheerful God, heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. And the scriptures also talks about that God will allow all grace to abound in everything. And that scripture says all, 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 everything that God is our provider. And some of you are witnesses out there of how good God has been. Don't forget about our women's conference that's coming up. Uh, because of your giving and uh, giving from your heart, we're able to do these special events. And the one coming up on uh, July 13, uh, 9 a.m. to 2, one of our uh, members, Laura Howard, will be speaking on that day. And I'm telling you, the ladies are looking forward to it, uh, just growing, growing in the Lord. Well, today, as we get back to the basics, I want you to be in prayer. I want our hearts to be prepared just to hear God's voice today. So let's just take a time of singing and celebration as we think about who Jesus is. We'll see you soon. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother. Called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And the prayer goes like this. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hands would be with me, and keep me from evil, so that I may not cause pain. So God granted what he requested. Amen. But I'm going to keep on pressing on God to the battle fall. Victory is won If you make it in glory Before I do Save a seat for me Oh yeah Listen I have a few more Yeah Tears to share I have a few more better to bear. I have a few more time to give up. Cried for the wrong. Oh, Lord. But I'm going to keep on. Save a seat for me. 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 Save a se
me. Every day of my life, sing for me. Save a seat for me. I tell you, that song blessed me. Uh, more importantly, it blessed me because uh, Brother Pettiford's had some health challenges and he sang that song. So I just praise the Lord for him leading our group into praise today. Save a seat for me. Well, as we get back to the basics, I just want you to be encouraged. Life really comes at us fast, right? There are so many ups and downs. We've got bereaved families that are struggling. We are dealing with things with our country, choices and decisions. But one thing that is steadfast is Jesus the Christ and his anointing. Before we go any further, uh, would you please uh, go in a word of prayer with me? Father, I just thank you so much for this day that you have made. Help us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, thank you that you are our everything. You are an on-time God. I pray for those who are listening and viewing, if there's someone that's not saved, that they will uh, be shaken up today, that they will confess you with their mouth and believe in their heart, that God, you have been raised from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It is a gift from you. Oh, that they reach out and grab the gift that you have so freely given. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Uh, would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make these words so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as always, we've been uh, doing our memory scripture, and uh, this has blessed me. I've actually uh, memorized a great portions of the book of James, and this just kind of reminds me as I've been working through just what I'm supposed to be doing, um, uh, what God expects of us as Christians. So if 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 you could, uh, if you could read this aloud with me, James 1.26 and 127, getting into our mind and seeping down into our spirits. If anyone amongst you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Isn't that good? Uh, as we apply this, I am telling you, uh, we're going to impact so many that are around us. Uh, let, let's get back into this subtopic that we've been dealing with, uh, dependence versus independence, when we are thinking about the relationship, our relationship with God. And today we're going to go back into dependency. Um, this is a powerful scripture that we're going to deal with today because we're going to be talking about Jesus and he being our example of total dependency on the Father's will. So let's go to Mark chapter 14. I want you to focus in on that 36th verse with me, please. And Jesus said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Let's listen to it again. It's just such a such a strong, powerful statement from Christ. And he said, Abba Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. I want to speak from a title today, God's will be done. God's will be done. Uh, Saints, uh, this is a, a message that kind of hits home for me because I'm raising five kids with my wife and seeing them grow up and literally they being all over the world. Um, there's so many things that we cannot control as our children grow up and become adults. And there have been so many times I've just said to pray, God's will be done. Any any witnesses out there? Uh, being married, 
you know, with my wife and us growing up and uh, together and two different personalities. There's been so many times I know my wife had to say, God's will be done. And so today I just want you to think about there are trillions of things that we can't uh, even control. And I would say there's so many things that we think we can control that are outside of our control. But when we can really embrace being dependent on God's will, uh, edging more to total dependency, that's where the peace of God that uh, really surpasses all of our understanding can triumph within our lives. Um, from last time, we were actually in the book of Matthew, uh, and we were looking at Jesus walking on the water. Remember Peter? He said, can I come and walk on the water? And he had a lapse of faith there and began to sink. But Christ uh, grabbed his arm and picked him up. And we learned about that our dependency, our focus has to be on the Lord, no matter what storms that we're going through. Today's time frame is 33 A.D. Um, we are literally hours uh, before Christ will be crucified. He will be nailed to a cross. Let's pick up that Mark 14, 32. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Here's our first point. Get this one. One word, pray, pray. Can you put that in the chat? I just, I just want to see it kind of go down there, pray, because this is an encouragement. This is uh, not just a point uh, that I want you to put down, but I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to pray as the scripture says. Uh, it was Thursday morning running into Friday uh, where Jesus is going through all of these things. So he's he's been on that trek throughout that Thursday morning, and now he's coming to the evening time, and it's getting into the night hours where the enemy is allowed to all out attack him. Our dependency, hear me, uh, in God really comes from our time in prayer, um, our intimacy uh, with the Lord. God's will be done. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane was a special place. This wasn't the first time Christ had come here. Uh, the scriptures let us know that this was a time, uh, a place that he would bring his disciples often, and they would just pray. Uh, they would commune with the Father. They would uh, take respite here. And I, and I have a question that I, I really want to get across, and I, I want you to think about in your life. Do you have a special place for prayer? Yes. Do you have a special place for prayer? Now, the scriptures let us know that God wants us to have a special place of prayer because this is where we grow. And, and if life has been coming at you and you can say, Pastor, I don't really have a special place of prayer. I'm praying in my, my car or I'm, I'm praying when I'm walking to somewhere else. I haven't really set aside a place. And some of you may say, what are the parameters of, of, of this special prayer? Well, first of all, God tells us to pray without ceasing. So we want to pray at all times, but he does give us some uh, insight on uh, wh where we could be at in these special times of prayer. Matthew 6, 6 says, but you, when you pray, Jesus brings this out. He says, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, Pray to your father who is in a secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I believe all saints need to have a special place where they pray, uh, whether you have an office in your home or a bathroom or in your bedroom, a side where you can get away from all the distractions, all the beeps and the notifications. I remember when I used to live in Chapel Hill, my family and I, and uh, we had our, our first child, uh, Tabitha, and I, I remember it was just a little small apartment. There was no room for anything except for us and, and, a, and a kitchen table pretty much much, but there was a closet there. And I, I took God's word, literally, I, I've cleared out me a portion of that a closet. And I would tell my family, I, I've just got to, I got to go pray. I'll put some headphones on and I would take time in the closet. Literally coats were hanging down there and dresses were hanging down, but I had to have a place where I could have an intimacy with the Lord and pray and learn about God's will being done in my life. I look at Mark 14, 33, and he took Peter, James, and John with him, that inner circle that we often see within the scriptures. And he took them simply because he's teaching them. They will be the prominent uh, leaders within the church. Uh, many of them uh, would die. And we find out John will be on the island of Patmos, but they had to have a special level of training. But notice this, and 
he, that's Jesus, began to be troubled and deeply distressed. When we're trying to work out God's will in our lives, there's going to be there's there's going to be some times that we become distressed because our flesh is rising up. And here, uh, Jesus, they begin to be troubled. And I, and I love that part. Deeply distressed. This is the Christ. This is the one that's without sin. That's our example. But yet he still went through. In Luke's gospel, uh, the spirit speaks of this, giving us a, a, another picture, a camera angle here in Luke twenty two forty four, and being in agony. He prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. God's will be done. Uh, 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 This is a term, hematidrosis, a a literal scientific term that talks about when we're under stress, uh, when we got uh, all kinds of things that are coming against, people can really literally uh, begin to... uh, have drops of blood uh, to come out of their pores. Uh, An amazing thought pattern. This is where Jesus was as he's taking on the sins of humanity, as he's fighting uh, through all the mess and the enemy's attacks so that he can be in the wheel of the Father. Mark 14, 34, then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch. Now, again, all these things are coming up. The sorrow is there. He's desiring his father's will to be done. Here's the point I want you to uh, get out of this. Pressure will come. Yes, any amens out there? Pressure will come. I don't care where you are in your life. There is some pressure. Uh, If it's not today, it'll be tomorrow. It's coming. Pressure will come because when we decide to do it God's way, I'm telling you the enemy is trying to do all he can do to dissuade us uh, from being dependent on God. Uh, As we look at Jesus, he is our example. Uh, Christ going through here, Hebrews 5, 7 gives us another angle. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, when we talked about praying to stay in the God's will, being dependent on him, Jesus did this with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save. Uh, There's a song that says, trouble in my way. Uh, Sometimes I have to cry. Uh, that, that, that's the way it is. Sometimes you're going to have to cry out to God and, and the fervency is there knowing that he'll never leave you or forsake you, but yet desiring God's will in your life, able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, listen to this, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. It, isn't that good that the pressure, the pressure is going to come? And so God, even when pressure is, is against us, God can use that, that we can learn obedience to God's will. I'm telling you, we serve an amazing God. It's been said, pressure creates diamonds. Fire refines gold. I, I, I want you to hear that again. Pressure creates diamonds. Fire refines gold. What, what, what is God producing in your life? And I'm believing, I'm speaking, he's making you into a diamond. He's producing gold within your life as we're learning to depend on him and to pray God's will be done. What things are you going through right now that God is using to lift you up? Joseph of the Old Testament, he went through it. If you look at that story, I'm telling you, he's he's sold, uh, sold into slavery by his brother. He's lied on when he's in slavery by Potiphar's Potiphar's wife. He's thrown into prison because things go bad. God raises him up in prison, but he's still in that jail system. But God is amazing. He's able to use some dreams and and he takes him from uh, interpreting dreams up into the king's palace. And then the king realized this is a man of God, raising him up uh, to second in charge. And Joseph, because he understood, he was able to see the the, the, the long view of, of what God God was up. He said, I know something about God's will in Genesis 15, 19. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. For I am I in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me. Somebody say, but God, can you put it in the chat? But God, I, I want you to get that. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me 
But God, but God, wherever you stand and say, say, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. God's will be done. When you can uh, take the long view and, and you can realize whatever I'm going through right now, I want God's will to be done. Even if it don't feel good, uh, my flesh is fighting against it. I know God that you're going to be exalted. Look at Mark 14, 35. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Look at this 36 verse. And he said, Jesus said this, Abba, Father. This Abba interpreted uh, within the Greek, it means daddy. That, that, that's an intimacy. In order to embrace God's will, you've got to come to the point to know he's daddy to you. He, he's saying, come on, uh, sit, in, sit in my lap. I want to embrace you. I, wanna, I know best. Uh, some of you a little older, uh, there was a, a show that came on Father's Knows Best. Uh, well, we got to know our Heavenly Father knows best. Abba, Father, he says, all things are possible for you. That, that encourages me as I walk this life of dependence see on the Lord to know that everything is possible for God. God has never lost control of anything. Even when the world is acting crazy and politics are going left and right, we've got wars and rumors of wars. We've got hurricanes going through areas, heat waves and droughts. I know God has not left, uh, has, has not lost control and it encouraged me to be dependent and to pray God's will be done. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this away from me. But here it is. Nevertheless, I need some quick pipers. Uh, can you uh, put in the chat? Nevertheless, I know it's a long word, but I need you to say it. Uh, those who are sitting, saying, say, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Here's the point I want you to get out of this. Please get this one. The struggle. Yes. The struggle, the struggle. Uh, theologian Ed Henson uh, captures the, the urgency of this moment where we have the example of Christ and his prayers and his cries and seeking the Father's will. He says, nowhere else in scripture can one find a clear picture of Jesus' humanity. His response to the hour lacks none of the emotions that other men would have felt. He, however, refused to allow inner feelings to direct him. He submitted fully to the Father's plan. Oh, what an example in our lives to submit fully to the Father's plan. I've lived long enough uh, to, to let you know that sometimes our emotions will lead us astray. Uh, our hearts are deceitful and, and our hearts want to go to places that we should not go. But I'm telling the word of God and the direction of God will never fail you. God's will be done. We must stay dependent on God even in the midst of the struggle. We're, we're encouraged uh, by the Spirit in Hebrews 12. Three, for consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary. Can you scream out weary? Put in the chat weary and discouraged in your souls. Saint says we're submitting ourselves to the will of God and, and praying that to be dependent on him. Sometimes, man, uh, we can feel weary. It, it, it seems like that, that God may be asking more of us. But remember, he'll put no more on us than we can bear. We just got to trust him. Just living in life, uh, getting up from day to day can make us weary and discouraged. But Hebrews 12, 4, it says you have not resisted. We, we talked about that. Resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. We got to realize how blessed that we have been, how, how good a daddy that God has been and how he has ordered our steps and provided for us and he's taken care of us. And that encourages us as we're submitting to the wheel, even in the midst of the struggle, we can say, God, you have been faithful. Look at Mark 14, 37. Then Jesus came and found them sleeping. His disciples, you remember his inner circle, he says, and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Now, this is important. I point this out in scriptures uh, so many times because it is significant. Jesus said this. Could you not watch one hour? One hour. Can you put in the chat one hour, one hour, wherever you're standing, sitting? Could you say one hour? This this really isn't a night. He said, you know what? I'm going through right now. I, 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 just, I just wondered, could you not just watch with me? Uh, Peter, James, John, I took you in uh, to the deep part uh, uh, of Gethsemane so, so you could pray with me. You, you could be my, my prayer warriors. We could touch and agree where two or three get together on one accord. I'll be in the midst. But when I, when I came back, I've been crying out. I'm, 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 I'm bleeding. I sweat as 
drops of blood are coming from my pores and I, I come back to you and, and you're, you're, you're sleeping, Mark 14, 38, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Yes, as we're praying uh, at God's will, we got to stay in God's presence, watch and pray so that we don't enter in that temptation to do what the enemy is trying to do to trip us up, to keep us out of God's will. It says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We, 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 we can understand that. All right, this is the point. It's going to take time. Yes, for God's will to be done in us, you're going to have to spend time in prayer. You got to spend time struggling through at the, the pressures that are brought your way. It's just not going to come automatically. It's not going to say, uh, how many times says, you know, okay, God, I'm going to do your will. And, and then life hit us. You know, we get a word on Sunday or through our Bible studies, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Like, okay, I got it, God, I got it. And I'm, I'm going to walk. I'm going to change tomorrow. And we get up and life hits us. It takes time for God's will to be done in our lives in order to be dependent on God. You, 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 you have to decide, God, whatever it takes, however long it takes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay in your presence. I'm going to stay in your presence. Lord, I'm going to set aside a specific time every day where I'm going to pray. And if you ask me to pray more, I'm going to pray more. I'm going to take time to worship and lift up my hands, even when I don't feel like it, because I realize that's the trek of faith to trust you and to pray that God's will be done. I must tell you, in my life, as I'm uh, teaching you and we're going through these scriptures together, I, I have a hard time when it says it's going to take time when it comes to farming. Uh, my dear Deacon, Deacon Rudd, who just passed away, I came on my house uh, uh, several times and he wanted to make sure my garden was doing good and telling me how to plant it. And, and my, my issue and my struggle with gardening is waiting. I, I had no problem really putting the seed into the ground, but waiting on that thing to come up and, and watering, especially as we've had these drought conditions and everything that's been going on, but 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 it's going to take time as, as we're seeking God's will to be done. Uh, God is working something on the inside. Jesus even teaches us about this waiting process in Mark 4, 26 to 28. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how for the earth yields crops. Listen to this by itself first the blade then the head after that the full grain in the head it's going to it's going to take time uh, I, I want you to look back over your life as you've been praying for god's will to be done in your life are you seeing that it's taking time that you're you're, you're not what you used to be I, I i i know you want to be so much more for the lord but i want you just to celebrate right now that god's will is being done we're becoming more dependent but it's going to take time look at mark 14 38 he says watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We've got to realize that our flesh is fighting against us. Yes, yes, our, our flesh. We were conceived in iniquity, and as we're desiring God's will to be done, our flesh so many times wants its will to be done. There ought to be some amen, some shouts that are out there. It's going to take time as God is working in us. Ephesians six twelve really lets us know where this battle is coming from. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. All of this is going on trying to keep us out of, of God's will. God's will be done. Look at Mark 14, 39 again. He went away and prayed and spoke the same words. It's, it's going to take time. He, he has to repeat this to work through this thing. And when he had returned, he found them, here it is, sleep. Again, can you can you just uh, put in the chat, sleep, <laughs> just say sleep. They sleeping again. Uh, sleep again for their eyes were heavy. I, I, I've been there. You've been there. And, and they did not know what to answer him. Mark 14, 41. And then he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. It's it's up. It's up. The the the, the enemy. He, he he he's right here. He's right here amongst us. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Uh, here's the point I want you to give. Please don't give up. Please don't give up. As we're praying for God's will in our lives, 
Don't give up. The enemy wants to beat on us and he wants to misdirect us. He wants us to look at everything that's going on in our society and say, you know what? Uh, throw up our hands and say, I give up. Don't give up. because uh, th 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 There's someone that said this. Don't give up God because he hasn't uh, given up on you. Don't give up on God because he hasn't given up on you. Second Timothy 4, 6 tells us of, of Paul the apostle and his fight to stay in God's will and for God's will to be done in his life. He says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. We got to realize none of us know when God's going to call us home. None of us know when we're going to cross that finish line, but we do know while we have life and strength, we got to keep on pressing towards that mark. Second Timothy 4, 7, he said, I, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Second Timothy 4, 8, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only, but to also all all who have loved his appearing. I just want to know, are you loving God today? And are you trusting him for his will to be done in your life? God's will be done. I, I remember when I was in the military, I had just started out in basic training and uh, we, we were weeks into uh, our, our matriculation and um, I got hurt. My, my foot got hurt and, and we were close. Literally, it was a few days before I would graduate out of basic training and my foot was hurt and uh, we got a pass to go out off base and uh, all of my colleagues, uh, fellow soldiers, they went off, but my, my foot was hurt and I decided, you know what? I am not going to quit. I'm going I'm going to wait on the Lord. I want God's will to be done. And I just had to do a few more exercises as far as it uh, concerning the military to be able to get to that graduation. And I said, God, your will be done. If I got to hop across that line, I'm going to hop around. And do you know God showed up and showed out? Even though I was in pain, I was able to push that pain out. And I found, I found out something about God, that God got you even when you don't feel like pressing. God has you. He is working stuff out in your life. There ought to be some witness to say, God got me. God's will be done. And I want you to keep on pressing because God is doing exceedingly abundantly above what you can dare ask or think. Look at this final uh, scripture today. I want you to get this one, Mark 14, 42. Rise. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Final point. Final point. Strong one, though. Warfare. Yes. Warfare. When we submit ourselves to God's will, when we finally say, okay, God, I give myself to you. And I believe we're going to do that in, in, in different places within our lives. You know, it, it, all of us are growing in different situations. But when we, when we really come to that point and say, okay, God, God's will be done, warfare starts. Warfare. Uh, John 10, 10 lets us know the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Uh, the, the enemy, the enemy, he's going to come. He's going to try to steal from us. He's going to try to kill us. He's going to try to uh, erase of the legacy of what God has done in all of our lives, but we can say God's will be done and we can learn how to trust him. I, I, I love there was a, a song that uh, a brother Charles Jenkins sang with the a Fellowship Chicago Choir. It was titled, This Means War. If you would just uh, go with me a little bit as I, I go through these lyrics, because this, this lets us know what it is all about to say God's will be done, even as you're going through the struggle, even when pressure is coming, even when you're putting all you, you got into prayer and you're saying, God, I, I can't do anything else but lift up my hands and just say thank you. And he began to sing in his song. He said, I got joy in my soul. God is controlled. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means, well, are there any witnesses out there? I'm talking about God's will be done. No matter what the enemy throws at us, we're saying this is warfare, but I'm so glad that I got a captain of the, I got a general that I'm falling out. I've got one that's already won the war for us. He goes on, you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's protection in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I'm talking about God's will be 
be done. You know what Jesus did? He left the Garden of Gethsemane. He was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. He was beaten all night long. They put a crossbar on his back and he went down the Via Della Rosa. We find him being uh, hung up on a cross, nails in his hands and nails in his feet. I am so glad that God's will was being done. For on that cross of Calvary, he prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He saved the thief on that cross and said, this day thou shall be with me in paradise. He cried out, it's finished on that cross. The sun refused to shine. The veil of the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder. They put him in a cold grave, but there ought to be some witness in the house. They said, I know where you're going. God's will be done. He did not get up on the first day, nor the second day, but third day early that morning. He got up with all power and all glory, and because he's gotten up, and now he's seated on the right hand of the Father praying for us, we can pray God's will be done. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the struggle is, no matter what the challenge is in your life right now, learn how to pray. God's will be done. It can hurt sometimes. Man, our flesh is going to try to go the opposite direction. The enemy is going to get so upset. But when we learn the power of dependency on God, when we don't understand, but we say, Lord, I trust you in spite of amazing things are going to happen in your life. God's will be done. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much for this lesson today. Thank you for your scriptures, your word that speaks to our hearts. Lord, some of your saints are going through right now and they've been trying to navigate, trying to figure out which way to go. But Lord, help them to pray, God's will be done. Lord, I thank you that right now you're massaging hearts. You're giving peace that goes beyond understanding. As so many are saying, I give up, Lord. I want to be dependent on your will. Lord, would you show up and show out? Thank you for the amazing things that you've already done. And truly, Lord, if you never do anything else, you've already done more than enough. But thank you for ordering our steps. I pray, God, for all those who are listening and viewing, if there are people that have not been saved, that today, Lord, they submit themselves and say, God's will be done, that they cry out to you and say that they are sinners. Confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you raised them from the dead. You said they would be saved. Let them experience that grace through faith and not of themselves, but receive that gift today. Lord, we pray together. God's will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never amount to anything. Oh, but I'm glad to say that I'm on my Oh!
so much for uh, taking this time to have communion uh, with us as we think about uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, as always, I encourage you, uh, if there is anything that you're holding in your heart, uh, please ask God for forgiveness. Uh, if there, you're holding against somebody, there's an issue, go talk to them or text them or give them a call uh, so that you can have uh, the peace of God in your heart and you can take this in the right mindset as we think about uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, please, please go ahead and get those communion articles. Some of you have uh, the cups from church or uh, maybe you have some bread in the house. Just get a piece of bread or maybe you have some grape juice, whatever uh, you can take to symbolize uh, the death, burial, and resurrection this communion time. We encourage you uh, to do that. Uh, before we get into uh, this, I'm going to ask my wife, uh, which we always, before we take communion, we, we actually are blessed to take communion a lot with our uh, different uh, services that are going on. And we're like, okay, we just want to make sure we're good so that we can be uh, good with the Lord. If she would pray over our bread and our juice. All right, let's pray. Lord, we praise you and thank you so, so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Lord, we praise you and thank you for his spilt blood, which washes away our sins, Lord. And we thank you for his broken body, which paid the price for our sins, Lord. And we lift up this bread and this juice as they are symbols of that blood and the body of Christ, Lord. Help us to take it in a worthy manner. Please bless it and bless us to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. On our Thursday night Bible studies, we're actually progressing through the book of 1 Corinthians. And in that, we are learning so much about staying close to the Lord, 
caring about our brothers and sisters. But Paul the Apostle actually gets a revelation of what communion is all about. And uh, he makes so many correlations within the book of Corinthians. And I, I just want to kind of jump to that 11th chapter around that 23rd verse. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, uh, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And, and just to think about the connection there um, that Christ is thinking about us, was thinking, is thinking about us now. He said in the same manner, he also took the cup after the supper saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So today, as we partake in this communion, we are thinking about uh, Jesus Christ, what he did on that cross of Calvary, um, how he um, bled for us, uh, took on our sins and our griefs and our sorrows and died. But the good news, he got up on the third day with all power and glory. Uh, Jesus goes into that upper room with his disciples on uh, just hours uh, before he will be crucified. And it's a Passover uh, and, and the disciples are thinking that this is just a regular Passover. But Jesus does something in the midst of the chatter, the talk, the laughing. He picks up the bread and he breaks it, getting their attention. And he says, this represents my body that's going to be broken for you as often as we eat. Let's do it in remembrance of him. Let us eat together. After they're chewing and the quietness is there in the room, he picks up the goblet of wine that would be shared amongst them and said, this represents my blood that will be shed for you. As often as we drink, let's do it in remembrance of him. Let us drink together. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. As you go forth today, I want God's will to be done in your life. And I want you just to trust the Lord with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, knowing that He is faithful. Until we meet again, you be blessed.